What's up, YouTube family? Waiting for more, a couple more people to get online. See that shirt there? Just hooked that up today. Boy, uh, Braxton showed me how to cut stencils, so uh, I was able to put that together without the airbrush. Came out pretty nice. Got to work on that. Uh, D got a little overspray there, but uh, get it together. All right, so today's topic is a nice little shipment I got from Japan. But unfortunately, the way things go, got chopped up a little bit. We got caught up in customs. Uh, one box, which is probably a pretty good size box, got caught. Definitely had a couple of those uh, Vercas with the special decals in them. And it had uh, some Zoids. I think it had two or three Zoids on there. And a couple other goodies on there. So hopefully it'll get through customs towards the end of the week, uh, some special form that needed to be filled out, and uh, so it goes. We'll see. We will see. Um, probably because I had a bunch of the uh, Gundam markers on it, too. That's probably what got caught up. Uh, but they stopped it for any old weird thing, like abrasive paper, sandpaper. I'm not blowing anything up with sandpaper, but we'll see what happens. All right. We've got another person on there. Or Lewis, he jumped on twice. Okay. Oh, okay, so you got a comment. All right. Yeah, FedEx, of course. It's FedEx. No doubt. Definitely FedEx. <laughs> FedEx is my enemy. All right, so uh, let's get to this. Starting down at the end, got some more banks in. So, most of you guys have been to my store. Y'all have seen these, but if not, they're super cool, super cute. So, got uh, the cats in again. Got two of those. Yeah. They even have them in all the different colors and stuff of cats. You got the Godzilla, and then this new Ultraman's the most recent one that just came out. So this one's pretty cool. It's a little different style. You put the uh, your coin there, and it shoots it at the monster, and uh, and then it's like all these crazy sound effects and destroys the monster. All right, got the Yokai watch uh, modeling. This is another funny thing that happens when I order stuff from Japan. Uh, Customs will stop those because they're like, you, you're bringing watches, and I guess watches get some kind of spe special tariff. <laughs> but yokai models. Come on, guys. All right. Uh, a couple of Pokemon. This is pretty cool. I found a Godzilla model. So, let's take a look at that. Get this uh, weird looking beam uh, fire effect. So, it's going to you know, look like that there. And this thing actually is pretty detailed for being a little chibi Godzilla. You can see all the little detailing on the uh, head there. It's all uh, posable. Got some PC parts there. Uh, yeah. And then he even has his uh, spikes on the back are in a clear color. I'm not a huge Godzilla fan, so you guys probably know exactly which Godzilla this is, but... And a few decals. You got three different kinds of eyes there, which is nice. All right, we got a reissue, a nice one. So, oh yeah, Gundam Seed fans. I mean, they do have some of the best mechs, but uh. Not the best story, but I digress. <laughs> Sorry, Seed fans. But uh, here's the Freedom. Looking real good in here. I really like how they did the uh, the gunmetal, silver, inner frame parts look good. Alright, here is a couple of Gundams you don't see in the U.S. too often. Uh, Gunpla Builders. So... Uh, 
this predates Bill Fighters. If you haven't seen it and you like a little more of a realistic commercial, <laughs> which Bill Fighters, I will call the greatest commercial ever made. But uh, Gunpla Builders is definitely uh, a little more of a realistic one where the kid, um, it's, in, it's in a universe, probably, it's very, could easily be in this world in 10 years. But just a little bit in the future, and uh, you can actually build your Gundam, take it to arcade, and it will scan into the arcade machine, and then you can play your Gundam in the arc in the video game. So, not too far fetched, and we could actually have that pretty soon. So, this is a uh, it was a pretty cool. I guess it was an OVA or a very small series, but uh, it has some interesting designs, and it's the forerunner to your uh, Bill Fighter. So, pretty cool. So you got a nice uh, color variation on the uh, the high new. This is the uh, main Gundam from the series. It's kind of funky. It has some really weird angles for a Gundam. So something different. Mm, those beam sabers. And I think this is uh, probably a mid-season upgrade type thing. It gets crazy big. Angles get really weird. crazy amount of effect parts there and then this is a, a classic one I was just on East Coast Gundam Builders earlier today and somebody has a uh, a resin one uh, set up for this to go onto a master grade but uh, this is a super custom Zaku F2000 if you haven't seen this thing purple is probably not the best color but uh, this thing's a monster and these at times can get very hard to find they can uh, easily jump up to like the $50, $60 ballpark when they're uh, sold out. And then you got your uh, old school 8th MS uh, Goof Flight type. So I think this is a pretty old kit. We got 1998, so yeah, this is an oldie. But I don't think they've redone it since then, so if you like to have everything or you like Goofs, this is a good one. It's got the big old Gatlin. Alright, here's another one that is a hard one to find at times. The Bear Tetra. This thing will disappear for years at a time. So, plastic, eh. They could do better with that color, but uh, definitely you'll see a lot of customs of this on uh, online, and they look great. So this is definitely one hit up with some custom work all right gun cannon old school from 04 it's a nice one a little different from what you're used to seeing and then I believe this just came out. This is the AT-AT from Star Wars, obviously. All you Star Wars fans know it. Uh, 144th scale, so scale we're used to working in. And uh, Bandai's been doing a great job with these Star Wars uh, <laughs> kits. I love the fallen one over here in the corner. <laughs> ah, I've fallen and I can't get up. Great stuff. Alright, let's look at this. Uh, this is new. So uh, this came out a couple weeks ago in Japan, but uh, been waiting for this for a while here. So you got your Vidar Camaris. Pretty interesting. Thought I opened one of these already, but I don't see where I put it. So give me a second and we will take a look at that plastic. Just trying to look at some of the comments you guys are making. All right. So, actually, the way it comes up on camera, which is the way it looked, because uh, it looks much bluer on the camera, but that's definitely a uh, some shade of purple on the lavender side. Yellow's pretty nice. 
Uh, definitely not white, um, slightly off-white. Normal um, Iron Blood Orphans kind of brownish hue to these uh, parts here, the dark parts, which look like mostly frame and weapons. Or no, mostly weapons. The frame parts are uh, in a blue-gray color in there. Surprisingly, not that many runners. But, yeah, that is a chunky lance. Should be a good build. I think we'll see a lot of good customs coming out of this one. Got that bale back in, so that was sold out. Got two of those in. I think I have another four or five coming by Friday, so... If uh, somebody actually bought the other one that came in this shipment, but so I have one left, and Friday I should have four more, so you should be good if you're coming on the weekend. Got another the uh, the Zaku one from uh, Origins in, so that'll get you guys if you haven't grabbed that yet, another chance at that one. And Miss Carter's Gray's got that back in. And then let's get to some of the little more rare stuff here. So, you guys got to let me know if you're feeling these. Because uh, these frame on girls are pretty hot. I watched the first episode of the anime. It just started. Not really feeling the anime. But these been out for a while. So, do you like the suits themselves? Um, take a look at what we're looking at here. It's Kota Bikia. It's a little different than Bandai. But they do a good job. And they give you a lot in there. You get water slides in here with several different eyes. Um, usually the faces are already made up for you. It comes with a stand. This is what I really love about it. Like, right here. You already have three faces, eyes done. Because you don't want to mess the eyes up. So, so nice they do that for you already. But, if you're, if you like to experiment, they give you a face. So, you can do your own. And they give you water slides and all that good stuff. The colors are really, really rich and on point. So, lots of clear effect parts in this one. But, uh, these ain't cheap. So, I don't like to order a lot of these. They're going to sit on the shelves. But, if you guys start hitting me up and you, know, you want them, I can start getting more of them in. Just, I have very few customers that are hitting these up right now. I think it'll get a little more popular with the show airing. But, uh, I would love to have, like, the whole line in here. And it's possible. It's just, I need to know because... They sent me back a little way. <laughs> and here's a limited edition one. One of my customers, uh, I let him know about it, and he jumped all over it. So this comes with the uh, Hobby Japan included, and it's a special color way of the uh, base lord. So really nice. Box is totally different, way thicker. So nice little display piece, the box itself. Then on the rest of the shipment that's not here yet... So, like I said, hopefully we'll get it by the end of the week. Uh, there's a couple more Zoids on there. I think there's, uh, I can't remember. Some, there's a Liger. I think it's a Schneider. And uh, I think one other Zoid. Probably one of the, um, the dinosaur-looking ones. But uh, I think there's actually a Lightness. No, this is a Lightness Psych, so there might be one of the Wolves on there. Shadow Wolf or something on there, too. These come out great looking. If you haven't seen one in person, they look amazing in person without any painting. Just top coat them, and they look great so again Kota Bikira does I mean these aren't cheap kits so <laughs> and the Zoids aren't technically supposed to come to America for retail so don't tell nobody but uh, I got them so <laughs> I think it's all license license type of stuff but they're not allowed to be distributed at least so you gotta actually get them from overseas but look at this this is their Silver metal color comes out really good. Probably better than most band than Bandai does with this stuff. Gotta say, gun metal looks great. This red look. I don't know if you can catch all this detail here. The shine, but there's a lot of detail in these pieces already. So again, not cheap kits, but really good kits. And look at this. There's like gun metal, silver. Then this color is slightly different, I believe. Maybe not. Maybe it's the same, but. Stuff looks good. So if you're a Zoids fan or if you're not a Zoids fan, 
get tired of building uh just humanoid robots. You can always do animalistic looking robots. Alright. Another thing you don't see too often is the uh, H hanger basis. So these are by wave. Uh, you can also get the arms to go with them. These are pretty small so I would definitely suggest these for a uh, 144 scale. But uh, they are pretty cool as well as Something different than just the Kota Bakia one, so you have another option, otherwise I'm just Kota's stuff. Which Kota's, kits, Kota's ones are nice too. I have those in stock, so hop on those. They were out of stock pretty much around the world for a couple of years, and they went crazy prices. So hopefully Kota will keep producing them, because they're great. Alright, so this is the uh, limited edition for Kazuka with the extra stickers. So like I said, that... Um, shipment that split up the other one i think has a new high new on it that has them too so you know your standard stickers or water or uh the um uh, dry transfers i always forget the name of those and then they gave you some really nice water slides metallic water slides so look nice and then to round the kits off I got back the perfect cell and Super Saiyan Son Goku 3. So nice ones. It's funny. All your little uh, stores are starting to grab up these. I think that Hot Topics. Um, I think GameStop's starting to carry them. I was thinking at uh, Barnes and Noble and stuff, but uh, they don't sell the tools to go with this stuff. So I don't know why people are buying models where you can't even get the tools. All right, so let's get to the tools. So we got hands, some nice accessories. So these are pretty much like the real grade hands, and you can throw them on any high grade. But I have a master grade M1100, so if you got some old master grades that don't have good hands, right here. Or if your master grade's hands broke, or you want like sharp fingers, because these are actually have like points at the tips of these fingers, so they're a little more aggressive looking. And if you guys, like, you know, let me know you like this kind of stuff. They come in rounded, squared, sharp fingers, grays, blacks, maybe two shades of gray. So they got a lot of options. So stuff I can get for you guys, but, you know, gotta let me know. Uh, Kota Bakia, MSG line, nuts. You, know, you got a assault rifle here, all kinds of crazy stuff. You guys have seen some of the stuff I've had in here with that. Chainsaws, Gatling guns that actually rotate. With a battery, nasty, just nasty. Uh, swabs, great for your panel lines, any kind of details, great for doing um, your water slides and stuff like that. These aren't you know, like cheap swabs that you put in your ear, these are actually like a lot more tight and compact, so they do a really nice job. Uh, business card uh, holder for all you Xeon guys out there, Sig Xeon, take your business cards, you know, represent. Uh, somebody came in right when I was unpacking. I already grabbed the uh, Gundam version of this, but uh, got the notebook with the uh, Zaku 2 on it. So, Zaku fans, there you go. Nice little toolkit. Got the options, and again with the nippers. So, uh, some US nippers. And then we got Mr. Hobbies. These are really nice. Got a nice weight to them. Got the baby nippers. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, these are really cheap. rest of my markers a lot of my markers are on the part that got delayed but we got some poor types in um if you haven't used those before they are nice they work only on unpainted kits and they work really well but so is a regular uh you know fine tip marker got yourself some uh a set of brushes it's a really nice fine tip these are by mangs the chinese company does really good models surprise surprise I actually do legit real models uh, and you got your Tamaya, so these are very fine. I think that's actually what they're called, very fine. But, uh, they're good too. And then Mr. Hobbies, we have a weathering brush. So this is when you're picking up your pigments and stuff like that, and you want to kick them on. So this was interesting. So we just had our diorama class. This is kind of cheating, but here's a very small diorama base you can just put together in a flat kit. 
kind of nice. But as we saw this weekend, you can make some amazing dioramas with ease, with very little. Oh, here's a Mr. Hobby's really nice uh, fancy brush there. Look at that. It's the kind of brush you really want to take care of. All right, what else we got? Hasagawa. You know, if you're doing some etching or anything like that, really good tool. And here is an interesting discovery I found. So this company called HIQ makes a ton of great mech parts. They, I, I got some in, and you know, if you guys have the interest, they have so many good, like thrusters and all kinds of little parts that are you know hard to make and or just this makes it a lot more convenient. They do a lot of good decals too. I think they have a whole sheet of caution decals. I'm gonna bring those in for you guys because I know a lot of people are looking for water slides and high grade size. So those will be really nice to have. So what you got here is you have the world's freaking smallest LED. No, it's not, but trust me when I say these things are tiny. Let me get this out of here because you're not even understand how small this is. I held it up to a high grade. This literally is the size of one eye. So we are talking about a tiny, tiny, tiny LED. But what's cool about it is that it's a system. So they have a battery holder and then all you need is this little plug part from your LED part. So you just plug that into there. It's a nice contained system. I tried it out earlier. Works great. I'm not sure if the battery I had was weak or just the LED is so small that it's not that powerful. But I found an open battery that I had. I didn't have any um, fresh battery. So I can't tell you how bright it is. But I can tell you it's super small. It's going to fit in anything. <laughs> you could put this in the top camera lens. You could put it in the eyes. Scopes on the guns, they are tiny. Now, the problem with high grades and real grades is they're not really meant for light. So you're definitely going to have to chop them up a little bit to carve out the space to get the light in there, you know, behind the clear effect part. But with a little bit of work, you're going to have something that's going to be special. That's maybe going to have that. And say you want to do a bunch of lights on one kit, a three-light harness. So they thought of everything, right? I wish they had like four because these lights are super small. I mean, this wire, so small. And what's really nice about the wire, it's really long too. So this can go all the way to the head, through you can run all the way through the body, out the foot, and still have some space to hide it under our base. Very long, it's about like 10 inches maybe. So you know your average Gundam high grade is probably like four or five inches. So plenty of space there. All right, and anime fans, Yuri on Ice. So we got the postcards in. Rest of the stuff has been confiscated by uh, customs, so you'll probably never get it because they're, you know, they love Yuri on Ice. I don't know, but uh, hopefully, I got some buttons and pins because this is the hot anime for, especially for the ladies. They love some Yuri on Ice. I'm sure, some fellas out there are loving it too on the DL. So, no shame, no shame. All right, so guys, that's all I got so far. Let me see what you guys have been saying here. Bop, bop. All right. So later this week, what's going on this week? So obviously, I have my lost box from Customs will hopefully come Friday um, or earlier. I got a shipment from my U.S. distributor, so I don't think there's too much new on there. Maybe like one kit's new on there, but it's going to be a nice bit of replenishment too. I know the option set 9 is in there uh, from IBO. What else is going on this week? Oh, tomorrow, game night. Um we got X-Wing. That's all I got to say. We got X-Wing. So come and play. We have enough uh, pieces here that you can get a good game and not just like demo game. I can teach you how to play like a full-on game. Um, Zach has been coming by playing. So uh, we're trying to get some more people in, man. We want to get a little tournament scene going on here. So let's get that going. We also play Cross Masters. Armada will be in tomorrow. Ruin Wars will be in tomorrow. So they're brand new to us. So we probably won't be playing them, but at least we can look at them. Uh, Zach and I got my second game of uh, Flames of Warren on Saturday, so played great. We played it on the front table, cleared out the Gundams, played on the desert scene. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we have tanks, so 
You got your military games. You got your sci-fi space games. You got your fantasy games of Room War. If you ha don't know what that is, check it out. It's all over uh, Facebook right now. Or not Facebook, I'm sorry, YouTube, because it's like the hot game by Fantasy Flight coming out. So I think it actually released last week, so we're pretty much right on it with getting that in. Uh, what else we got? Oh, Infinity. Great mini skirmish game. So from what I'm hearing in the miniature community, you know, games like Warhammer and Hordes and War Machine, those are like your big scale games. They, the new generation of games are much smaller skirmish style games. And Affinity has been around for a while, but it's a great mini skirmish game. And, you know, I'm looking to expand too into the game. So I'm looking at Bushido, Malifaux. That's a pretty cool mini uh, game. So there's a lot of options out there that I like to do. Warhammer is probably not really an option because Games Workshop's insane and I'm not really dealing with their junk. But, you know, if you guys start screaming, yo, we need Warhammer, then we can look into it. But for the most part, I need to get, you know, get your gamers in here, you know. It's pretty much the same community, so let's get you guys in here. Let's get some games going. I'm down to dedicate a whole night just to the Star Wars games if we get enough people in here playing. We already got a map, so we can do, uh, we got the 3x3 three three map. So we can definitely play some good-sized games, and I'm building a table right now that we can use for Armada slash whatever other games we need to use. So we'll have two large tables and two small tables to play on. And, oh, airbrushing class this weekend. So many people are salty they missed that diorama class uh, last week and when they saw the results. I mean, like, people were sleeping on that one. I don't know what you guys are doing with your life. Get it together, guys. <laughs> that stuff that came out of the diorama class blew my mind. Everybody did something different. Insane. If you haven't seen it, check Instagram, check Facebook. You're going to be blown away. Maybe we can get Braxton to come by and do another one in the near future. But uh, that thing was life-changing. It was amazing. I couldn't believe how easy it was. Everybody did it. Couldn't believe how easy it was. So definitely, definitely don't sleep on the airbrushing class. If, if you're even thinking about it, you know, it's like in the near future. Oh, yeah, thinking about airbrushing, if we have a year away, first of all, you can get a decent airbrush set if it's not sold out on Amazon for 60 bucks. Right now, it's been sold out, so I'm seeing, like, you get an extra, like, crappy airbrush with it for 70 bucks. But, you know, you're getting an airbrush, two airbrushes, a compressor, some sets come with some paint, so it's, it's pretty insane. I mean, they're obviously Chinese knockoffs of, like, Badger and other good airbrushes. But I don't know how good it's going to be to get parts in if you do break something that might be issue. But sixty dollars, you got an airbrush set up. I'm not just talking about an airbrush; you got an airbrush and a compressor, so kind of worth it. The compressor will last. Compressor will last you. And you know, if you break up the airbrush and you can't get the parts to fix it, then you invest in a better airbrush that you can easily get parts in the U.S. for. I always recommend Badger because yeah, they're a little expensive. But, I mean, you can get a Badger, a good one, for on Amazon for like 80 to 100 bucks. So, once you got your compressor, in a year or two, with that other airbrush falls apart, get a Badger. And you'll know you'll be able to replace those parts. So, and then you can do, boom, make your own shirts, you know. You guys are not even capitalizing on your airbrushes. <laughs> you can do stuff like this. This was pretty easy after I cut the stencil. So, and I mean, a little mistake there. You know, we'll fix that next time. All right, fix the stencil up, so ready to go for the next one. I got uh, Carlos coming and drop me a shirt off and try again. So that'll be fun. So yeah, definitely. Check the airbrushing class out. Noel has like six or seven airbrushes. So it'll be different types we'll get to mess around with. I think the main thing we're going to try to focus on this time is get you guys doing a little appreciate it. If you have a kit that, you know, will be easy to airbrush, you know, a couple parts. I mean, airbrushing is fast, so it's not going to be like super hard. But the problem is if you want to do a couple different layers and stuff like that, we need a lot of pins to hold stuff, and it takes a little bit of time for it to dry. But otherwise than that, we can bust out a kit right here. Class is at least three hours, so you'll have time. Um, it's mostly going to be hands-on. So come by, check our classes out. I've already had like two or three requests for people who missed the, uh, the diorama class to run that one back. A couple of people said, oh, they were upset they missed the picture one because the pictures came out so good the week before. Again, check out those pictures, man. Guys threw down some amazing pictures, too. Stuff coming out of these classes is its nuts. <laughs> these guys are all, like, new new guys. Uh, Carlos is the only guy last week that's uh, 
like really seasoned builder. Everybody else was new and they were busting out insane stuff. So you guys missed out. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably try to run it back in the summer. All right, so I'm checking out, guys. Oh, one last thing. You know, it's going to be Chef's Thoughts this week, so uh, do your homework. Uh, this one's going to be based on another YouTube video. You know, it's called uh, Basic Bitch. So it's by College Humor. If you haven't seen it before, look that up. It's going to get you in the right mind frame for this, uh, this video. It's going to be kind of funny. So uh, check me out on the site. Subscribe, like, do it all. It helps out, man. And I'll catch you guys later. Don't.